Howdy, Spoon fans. Here with another episode of Whiteboard Wednesday. And on today's episode, we're looking at the differences between short axis and long axis strokes. You may have heard these terms thrown around in the swimming community pretty often, but what you might not actually know is that depending on which type of stroke you're training for, you can actually train differently to maximize your effect in the water. Now the key differentiator between a short axis and a long axis stroke is where the kinetic energy actually comes from. So if we look at a short axis stroke, which is breaststroke and butterfly and underwater dolphin kick, the kinetic energy actually comes from your hips, which is different than a long axis stroke. In a long axis stroke, which would be your freestyle and your backstroke, the kinetic energy actually comes from rotational momentum. So if someone is swimming freestyle or backstroke and you were to take a laser and go right through their head, through their body and through their toes, you could, like a rotisserie chicken actually, rotate their body off 360 degrees around that same center line. And that's obviously not how it works in breaststroke and butterfly. When you have someone doing breaststroke and butterfly, their hips are what's actually driving this kinetic energy. And as a result, you have sort of an up and down motion, which is why breaststroke and butterfly are considered the most inefficient strokes and actually the slowest strokes when it comes to how much you'll fade in a race. Compare that with freestyle and backstroke, and you often see in races, people will be able to negative split or even split a race. In other words, go just as fast on the second half as they do on the first half. You would never see this in a breaststroke and butterfly race simply because of the inefficient nature of the stroke and the fact that your body position is a little bit lower. Now, obviously in butterfly, you can go really fast, especially compared to backstroke and freestyle. It's right up there with freestyle. However, for the sake of this discussion, work with me in knowing that breaststroke and butterfly are the most inefficient strokes when it comes to your body position in the water. And because of this, when it comes to actually training those different strokes, you should train them a little bit differently. If we go back to the different energy zones, and we have a Whiteboard Wednesday session just on energy zones, you have your aerobic zones and your anaerobic zones. Now, depending on which stroke you're training, whether that's a short axis butterfly or breaststroke or a long axis freestyle or backstroke, you actually want to spend a different amount of time in the aerobic zones versus the anaerobic zones. So really quick recap, you have seven zones starting from recovery, which is easy swimming. You have EN1, which is moderate, EN2, endurance, EN3 is threshold, SP1 is best average, SP2 is race pace, and then you have SP3 is sprint. Now, you want to spend a different amount of time in each of these different zones, depending on long axis versus short axis, because of what we were talking about when it comes to your body position in the water. When you're doing freestyle or backstroke, which is the long axis strokes, your body is relatively high in the water, and even if you were to swim backstroke or freestyle over a long period of time, your body position doesn't necessarily change that much. If you contrast that with breaststroke or butterfly, when you swim these strokes over a long period of time, your body position will suffer much more, meaning your body position is actually going to sink and you'll be swimming lower and lower in the water, which is why in a short axis stroke, it's super important to train at race pace or even above race pace to teach your body what it's like to swim fast and prevent your body from feeling the effects of swimming in a lower body position. Now this is different than a long axis stroke. In freestyle and backstroke, you can afford to swim a longer distance because you're not actually going to have the negative effects of swimming lower and lower in the water. And I have two, a few example sets so we can really understand what the difference is between uh, these types of, of strokes. So in a short axis stroke, uh, if you're doing breaststroke or butterfly training, the example set that we have is 10 100s and you go the first 50, you're going to go freestyle or butterfly, and the second 50 will be freestyle. Now the first 50, you're trying to hold a 200 pace. So again, trying to teach your body to swim at a race intensity that you're higher in the water. So you're spending the first half in the anaerobic zone, swimming best average, and the second half is easy freestyle in the aerobic zone. And we'll put that on two minutes. Now, if you compare that to a long axis training set, which might be five 300s, freestyle or backstroke, and that's gonna be in the threshold or endurance zone. So you're in the aerobic zone uh, to get a similar training effect as you would with 10 100s, trying to hold a 200 pace, which would be your anaerobic zone. Um, and I'll correct myself. So it's not necessarily the same training effect 
doing 10 100s versus five 300s. But the goal of improving your stroke is a little bit different because when you're doing a short axis stroke, you need to focus on 200 pace, performing at speed. So that's 100 pace, 200 pace. Or it's very technique focused and maybe you're not focusing on speed, but you're focusing on you know, swimming in the moderate zone with perfect technique. Now, the next set is 850s. Uh, the odds are freestyle easy, so you'd be in the uh, moderate or easy zone. And then the evens are butterfly or breaststroke at 200 pace. And when you're doing 200 pace or 100 pace for short axis strokes, you're basically teaching your body what it's like to move at a higher uh, level in the water. Because the last thing you want to do is train your body to move slow. Now, that's different from a long axis stroke where you can afford to do the 5 300s or the next set, which is 12-100s, freestyle or backstroke um, in a rainbow fashion. So you're going to go four rounds, the first one easy, the second one at threshold, and then the third one at best average. So you're still incorporating the speed, but if you look at the interval on a 130 pace per 100, as opposed to 850s on the minute, which would be a two minute pace per 100. So you're getting less rest, it's more of an aerobic focus in the long axis strokes. And that's again because you can afford to have your body sit in a higher body position for a longer period of time. If you look at the best swimmers in the world, like Michael Phelps in the 200 Butterfly, his coach Bob Bowman will often say in lectures that Michael did very few 200 Butterfly in training. Most of the time when he was training Butterfly, he was doing it at race pace or at 200 pace. So he was doing a lot of sets like 10 100s, 50 Butterfly, 50 freestyle. If you look at the best breaststrokers in the world, most likely they're not doing five 300s breaststroke. But if you compare that to the best backstrokers in the world, and they'll be doing a considerable amount of backstroke training. And if you're in a short course pool, that's really the only exception to this, where you might wanna do shorter, high intensity underwater uh, skills. But again, if you're training the underwater dolphin kick, that's really a short axis movement because you're using your hips to drive kinetic energy. And because of that, you would be doing short axis focused uh, swimming where you'd be trying to hold that higher intensity. So even if you're a backstroker um, and you're really focused on the underwaters, the backstroke may be an aerobic focus, but the underwater component of it, the underwater dolphin kick, will definitely be a short course component. So something to keep in mind if you're training for breaststroke and butterfly, it's a little bit different emphasis than if you're doing uh, freestyle or backstroke. But again, in summary, of all the energy zones, if you really wanna be a good swimmer, you're gonna need to train every single zone it's just the frequency will be a little bit of different. So uh, if you enjoyed this session, make sure to leave some love in the comments. And if you have any questions or you'd like to see any other things in these Whiteboard Wednesday series, would love to hear it in the comments. Until next time, happy swimming. Later.